Paul says, what then is my reward? That after I have preached the gospel, he says, I may make the gospel of no charge, that I abuse not my power which is in the gospel. That's not the power that makes the lame man walk and opens blind eyes and heals the sick and casts out tumors. No, there is another power. This one is not on the miraculous, no. This is the qualification of authority that gives me the grace of apostleship over you to command things that are hard to command, to respond to my voice because there is a position that I have with God. That's called ranking. See, you can keep the anointing and lose the rank. Did you get it? You can keep the anointing and you lose your rank. You know, when I began ministry, I used to see a few gifts in the church and I admired them. And I'd say, I think this gift would give us a blessing in my church. So I write them a letter, say, brother, come and minister to our people. And the next email this brother would send you, he tells you, uh, this is how much my honorarium is. This is how much you're paying my tickets. This is how much you're paying my, my stuff. This is how much you're paying this and that. And I read all of that. Let me tell you, when they send that message, I don't reply again. And I'll tell you why. I have stood on big altars in this world. Even in places you least expect me to be. But every time a man asks me what is the honorarium, I always told them, honor is given, not demanded. And I'll tell them, even if you didn't give me a coin, I'll walk back home strong, standing, empowered, and blessed because I don't need your seed to validate what's upon my life. What I have, you cannot pay for. You cannot pay for. So that's how I deal with all these men of God. You invite me, I'll buy my ticket, I'll do everything. You give a seed, good. You don't, I'm okay. But I cannot put a charge because I will abuse a certain power. Now, allow me to offend you even more. I'm talking to you artists. Who copy things from other artists? Who are already fallen oracles? Who have a voice but carry no distinctive mark of power? And an artist tells you, if you don't give me this much, I'm not going to come to your service to sing. And then you ask them, how much did you buy the voice? Oh, but I spend a lot of money when I'm going to the studio. And so if you're spending that money to go to the studio, don't we pastors to spend money? Do you think we began from here? Do you want us to tell you the story before we became? You spend all your money and then you go and preach the gospel. At one time I remember I went in a very deep village, preached the gospel, that God moved mighty. Miracle signs and wonders happened and the senior pastor who was a poor man walked to me with a young hen and gave it to me as his seed. That was what he had. You're talking of a generation that is not going to go in those places anymore. You're talking of a generation that won't go to give people life because somebody cannot pay them $10,000, $15,000. And I think one day we are going to stand with men who gave their lives, who are burnt at stake in India, who lost their wives in mountains deep because they were preaching the gospel. You're going to stand on the line with men who buried their kids in places where one man could not live because they were proclaiming the glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you're still talking of a generation that will not move for the man who shed his blood for them because you did not give them $2,000. What a generation. What a generation. No wonder the power has left our altar. Now it's cheap talk. It's manipulation. It's theatrics. It's theatrics. I cannot lose my power because, again, I, I ask you, especially the gifted who seek, don't 
and sell your gift. Ask God to liberate you from the provisions of men. Tell him, God, wherever I'm called, if the Spirit tells me to go, even if it's 20,000 miles, I'll go there. I don't want to abuse what's, what's on my life. I don't. Because like I told you yesterday, the first crippled person that walked, I was worshipping God. So I'm a worshipper. I know the power that can put a crippled bone straight by worship. I have my part in that. But then you don't sell it. Because all you'll keep is, is a noise without a voice. Because spiritually the distinctions that God can put on your life by that consecration that dies to the things of the world, it has no price, no money can buy it. And, and let me tell you, the reason why we are seeing very weak anointings in our generation, very, very weak and diluted graces, is because many things have conflicted our personal altars. Our all personal altars are dilute. We don't have power. We don't have power. We're just speakers. And we're going to continue just living that kind of life because the anointings are diluted. They are corrupted. The thing in there that is working in us, it's, it's the brooks are drying early. The stars are dimming. You find a very young man with a great gift, but the star dimmed long ago. And he needs to do so much to make one song shine, one salmon shine. And that can only linger for two, three, four, five months and tomorrow it is gone with its going. There is no grace to preserve it to the next generation because it has not come as an authority. It has come simply as a gift. So you find a big minister who should know you have a healing anointing and you won't let a woman dying of stage four cancer heal because they need to pay for your application with three or four dollars a month because without paying that application they would rather die they would rather die if they can't pay for that application than receive life and have another lease to live and serve Jesus and you know what happens now like I said Something is leaving our altars.